Welcome to the Get Your Act Together podcast. I am your host, Kelly Reynolds. And today I have, I'm so excited about this guest. I have Katie here uh, on our agency series. Hi, Katie. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> Katie, can you uh, introduce yourself and tell everyone about your business and about you? Sure. My name is Katie Suarez. I have an agency called Soar. Um, and my agency is based around uh, supporting residential contractors and interior designers in the residential space. Uh, traditionally, they have been brick and mortar style businesses and traditionally they've been quite a bit behind the times as far as technology and those sorts of things. So um, I work together with them to kind of get them on the online space and get them up to speed and get them ahead of ahead of the game compared to their competitors. That's awesome. Yeah, I I come from a family of contractors. So um, yes, everything is always in paper on notes and stuck in their pocket somehow <laughs> is my recollection of how businesses were run. So I think that's a great, great way to, yeah, to niche down. I was um, just laughing with a client today about, I re recall <clears throat> a couple of years ago, one of the guys came and handed over his time card on a two by four <laughs> written in, <laughs> in pencil. So Things have changed a little bit since then. <laughs> that seems exactly right <laughs> from what I remember. So, all right. So this is the agency series, right? So why did you become an agency? Why are you not a solopreneur? Why? Why? Uh, so I've been in the billing industry for over 20 years. 2000 was my first um, job. Uh, I just started answering phones. And then the first downturn of the economy occurred. And I was all excited because I was getting a promotion to accounts payable um, when really they had let the accounts payable gal go and gave me a promotion at a lower pay than her. <laughs> so, but literally over time, um, I went through sort of a family of businesses um, and wore all the hats, everything, like I said, from answering phones and getting toilet paper at Costco to um, a project engineer, field engineer, reading plans, scaling, running small punch crews, um, doing a small, like small um, retail TI. Um, and then over time, I just really felt comfortable in sort of the accounting operational space, um, HR, accounting, contracts, insurance, like all the stuff that business owners think are, is boring, but yes. it really, it's, <laughs> it's really so important. What, right, right. And it's really what, you know, I just understood it. I understood the language. I found an affinity for numbers. So um, continued sort of in an operations management slash CFO role through several other uh, companies over the years. And then um, my husband and I decided that we wanted to settle back down in my home state when we had kids. So came back, I'm fifth generation Montanan, proud of it. Uh, <laughs> so we came back to Montana and I was working for an electrician and I realized I, I have worked for a lovely male colleagues, but I still felt this pull between working and being a mom and just not, not feeling comfortable taking time off for my kids, but also not feeling comfortable sacrificing, you know, time with them for mm -hmm. work. So um, I had kind of learned about the virtual assistant space and the online space, uh, explored the online business management certification, and I talked to my husband, who's been amazing, and said, look, girl, if that's what you want, I know you can do whatever you want. Do it. Hmm. Yeah, it was great. So left left the work world um, and started my own business virtually and very quickly learned that I, I had the skills that I had were so vast and so deep that there were a lot of areas of business that I could cover, but me, myself alone, I just, I couldn't do it all. Yeah. So yeah. So started kind of teaching other people, you know, bringing on virtual assistants, an online business manager, bookkeepers, and teaching them those things and just evolved into an agency. So I think that's, I, that's I feel like that's, that's how it always works. <laughs> Right. right. Like it's very few times where they're like, oh no, I really had a plan for an agency. I feel like you, you start doing it and you're like, whoa, like I can do all the things, but I don't want to do all the things. Right. Right. And there's a lot of conversation around, you know, it's, it's hard to manage other people and, you know, be responsible for their, their work performance. So I think it takes, I don't think it's for everybody and it takes mm. a certain type of personality and a certain person. 
but it's it's working well for me so far. So, you know, I enjoy it. What? Yeah, that's an interesting point. It isn't for everybody, right? And I feel like the idea of agency, even in our world, um, is very polarizing. Some people love it. Some people hate it. What do you think is so, like, are the important things that, is it leadership skills? Is it working with people? Like, what do you think you need to be happy with this kind of style? You know, I think it's a, it's really a mixture. Um, it's a juxtaposition of all the things. So while you do need good leadership skills, you also need flexibility. Um, while you do need really solid boundaries and really solid rules, you also need to be able to pivot. And I know that's a buzzword, but just being able to, to switch it up a bit. Um, I, I think for me, I try to come off pretty, not aggressive, but strong, full of like really solid boundaries. But when the time comes, I'm soft. Like, and I don't mean soft that people, <laughs> like people can roll over me, but I, I want to do what's best for the client. I want to do what's best for the subcontractor, what's best for the employee. It, you know, it's, it's all about getting up every day and doing something you love. And if you're this hard, you know, hardline person all the time, it's yeah. not fun. So it's not fun. And you yeah. usually tend to be really stressed out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, sound. it's necessary, necessary in the role we have. It's finance sure. and logic and insurance and contracts. But really when it comes to the people piece, you, you just have to have a good mix of the two. Yeah. Yeah. The boundaries thing, I think is like, that was one of the hardest things was trying to find the the mix of I have to make the right decisions for the client, for the, for my business. Right. Like you said, but at the same time, like I want to be nice and make sure that my, like being nice and being responsible, like, you know what I mean? Like, and sometimes those, those clash, uh, there's yeah. definitely people that I've really liked on my team, but they were not a fit right. having those right. like hard conversations. Um, yeah, those, that's the hardest thing. I think like that team management. Thing. It is. And when you're, when you're a, per, a perfectionist and you do things a certain way, it's really easy for, you know, your ego to get in the way and be like, no one can do it. Mm-hmm. Like I can, but guess what? <laughs> guess what sister? <laughs> there are true. people out, they won't do it exactly like you do, but they are fully capable. So. And some of them could even be better than you. Right. 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 Like I've got people on my team. They're totally better than me. And they'll be like, oh, this is awesome. Then I don't feel so bad. You can totally take this away from me because you're going to do a better job than I will. For but that sure. is, but the ego, you're right. That's hard. It gets in the way. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. So on this idea of like delegating out, um, it's a huge thing that people come to me talking about a lot. Like, how do you touch my, like, let people touch your stuff and, and how do you, delegate that? How do you trust people to do it? How, like you're, you know, you're putting your business on the line. How do you handle that? And did you have a hard time in the beginning doing that? I still have a hard time doing that. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think if there's anything and I'm still learning, like I'm still in growth phase, right? If there's anything I'm learning, it's to really just like, let people go with it. You have to trust and let people go with it to an extent that you're comfortable with so that you can rein it back in <laughs> if there's if there's something wrong. We're really trusting that other people, they may, like I said, they may not do things the way the same way you do, but they're fully capable of doing it. So and you and I have talked about this before, you know, just being able, it's really hard to delegate things to other people when you're feeling responsible, but you just you, you got to trust the process and and if it is not successful, you really need to question yourself. Did I not clearly communicate the requirements, the, you know, the process, whatever it is like, that's a reflection on, on yourself, whether you're communicating. Oh yes. Holy agree. Like, that's my biggest thing is like, if somebody messes up, my first thought is I must not have explained it correctly. Because mm-hmm. if I can do that, like if I explained it perfectly and they're, they had the access and they had the SOP or they had whatever, they had all the knowledge they needed to do. And then they messed it up. Well, then that's a whole different story. Then we have to look at like, okay, are you fit for this role? But most of the time it's just communication. Sure. And some, most of the time, I'm sure my husband uh, will definitely leave this part in the recording because he (laughs) will tell me all the time that I start conversations in the middle. 
So I think I've completely explained something. And he's like, you skipped the first paragraph. That was all quietly in your head. And then you told me the rest. And I have no idea what you're talking about. So I, you know, trying to remember that when I'm flaming pissed at somebody because they messed something up. Like, (laughs) okay, calm down. Right? Right. Right. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So what does your team look like at this point? Where, what, like, is it contractors? Is it, how big is it? What does it look like? So um, we actually had a quarterly meeting at the end of third quarter, and there were nine people, including myself. Um, it, it's, it ebbs and flows because right now, literally this week, I just hired my first W-2 employee. Ooh. Yay, I know, it's so exciting. Very big um, deal. I should say I'm in the process of, like, <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, the, an offer was extended and agreed to, and so we're finalizing the details. Um, and then I have goals to bring on one other, at least one other person at the beginning of next year. Um, but otherwise it's contractors. Um, but what I'm finding is, you know, because I support residential contractors and design professionals, there are so many similarities in the makeup of their team. Mm -hmm. Obviously there's exceptions to the rule, but in general, I think I can hit the target pretty close based upon businesses revenue levels, what their team makeup and chemistry, not their chemistry, but their makeup needs to be. Yeah. Um, I think the beauty of, of the service we offer is that we have, you know, a variety of roles that we can serve. And if you already have people on your team that you like and want to keep, we can kind of plug and play and fill in the gaps. Or, Mm. you know, if you've been juggling all the plates for so long, we can just take over. So um, it just depends on what the, the client's needs are. Got ya. Yeah, I mean, that is so handy. And I think it's one of the really big advantages to having an agency is for those small businesses who don't, maybe they came from corporate, they did a thing, they had their business, they don't know how to run their business. Um, and they need certain people, but they don't need full-time people. They don't need a full-time bookkeeper. They don't need a full-time whatever. Um, and having that agency to say, no, 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 we can plug into those things that you need. And Mm -hmm. you don't, you can just hire us. We'll take care of those things without having to hire seven people. Right. Right. I mean, I find myself doing that in my own business. Like, geez, I wish I had a CPA a couple hours a month. Geez. I wish I had, you know, an admin for a few hours a week. And it's really hard to find quality people who can fill those positions, Mm -hmm. but essentially you're getting my, my people are full-time because they're spread amongst a variety of clients um, and they're experts in their area. Like it's, it's the beauty of hiring an agency is you get, you get the unicorn, you know, to use a buzzword that you're looking for in depth and breadth. So, yeah, because those expert level people that you want, and you only need a couple hours of, they don't want to just have a couple hours here and there, unless you're buying a package of some sort or, but like they, you can't hire those people for four hours a month. Right, right. But you can as like a whole agency. It really is the big benefit to having the agency is that access to that high level talent without having to, well, you can't get it out otherwise. You can't get just like really these people to come in for three hours and be like, oh yeah, okay. Unless it's a VIP day or something else like that. And that's a different story, you know? And the beauty of having like a niched field is, and I was actually just telling a um, potential client this yesterday is that you, like I have, I've seen 20 businesses Mm -hmm. doing the same thing and can see what the commonalities are as far as like needs, frustrations, roadblocks, all those sorts of things. So, uh, you know, you get that sort of inside visibility to what everyone else is doing to, to compare, you know, match your bar against whether you're meeting that or not. I think so many people are anti niche. They're like, oh, no, no, no. I want to work with all the people. But there's, there's like an, there's like another skill level when you have that niche because you know what people need. You Mm -hmm. know how these people work. Like you were saying, I can look at these businesses and based on revenue pretty closely see what they're going to need and know how to fill that. Mm -hmm. There's not, I don't need, you know, you don't need to go out and research a ton to figure out what they need because you've seen this before. You know how to handle it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's the beauty of that niche that I think is great because you you are operations, but you are directing it to a certain 
sector that you've worked sure. with forever and you've worked with them on the other side of it. it wasn't in all different ways right you you, mm -hmm. you answer the phones all the way through like you've seen all of that kind of back into the business um and that is such an asset such an asset yeah yeah so well, and i think it, what so i always look for patterns and commonalities and so being able to have 20 years of honing yeah. in those patterns and honing in those commonalities it makes it e really easy to train new people coming on board on my team because i know this is what you're going to see you know we when we bring somebody on board we already know what tech tools we want to recommend we already know what um you know we want to get your google drive set up because i guarantee you they don't have like back in the days when we had the paper filing system and yeah. you had that stack this big that needed to be filed uh -huh. the same thing happens virtually like there's files everywhere and they need to be in one common place. So it sounds simple, but it's not like getting that set up in a cohesive way and managing that. It takes a lot, um, you know, getting on, on a financial process. I, I have a process that I recommend for like, you know, tidy Fridays when we're cleaning up the messes, Wednesdays are collections, Tuesdays are AP. Like we have a process. And although many people are, especially creatives in the design world, or really tactile people in the builder world, they're opposed to processes because they just are used. But that's the beauty of it is you can mm -hmm. just give the process to us. We'll yeah. take care of it for you. You go be you, you go be creative, go design the most beautiful log cabin, you know, ever made or go create, you know, some do some carpentry. We'll take care of all of that stuff and get it organized for you. So yeah, cause, yeah. I mean, the wonderful thing about having that niche is that you know the typical strengths of people that do that work, right? There's mm -hmm. a ton of people, every contractor I know has never wanted to do paperwork. Yeah. You know, like they don't want to do that. They want to go, you know, they know how to be a carpenter. They know how to do whatever. So uh, being able to see that and then talk to that, like in your marketing seems a lot easier than just mm -hmm. going, oh, whatever, I, I can help anyone, you know? Yeah, right, right. Um, so let's talk about, actually, let's tell the people where we met because we've known each other for years now. Yeah. We, we Voxer each other, uh, at least quarterly to check in and say hello, Right. but we met in the DOO. You were, I think my first agency coaching round. You may have been like my, one of my first coaching people ever. I was round was five. Right? You were. So that, yeah, yeah, that was it. You were my yeah, first I round. And I was like, I have no idea what to do here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you told me because you did great. You, I mean, I still to this day, years later, reach out to you with questions. So, well, and I love that. Like, I was like, oh, I love it. Uh, no, that's kind of funny. So, we've known each other for a long time. And um, I had to cajole Katie to be on the podcast because she didn't really want to do podcasts, but I meet her and she's here and I love it. So, I'm getting to see her face today. Um, if you go to YouTube, you'll see her face too. But <laughs> so, like, it's just exciting. And we are very, we went through the DOO. We're very like-minded with numbers and ops, but we have very different businesses, which I mm -hmm. always think is very interesting. Part of the reason I want to do this agency series, because even the people that kind of the same background have totally different businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know? it's interesting. My agency is based on retainer clients. So, you know, some agencies are based on project deliverables. Some are based on, you know, whatever, but my yeah. clients are all retainer. And I, I personally love being in the business for a long time and seeing it grow and helping it. I, I'm not an in and out type. That's interesting. Yeah. I feel like I was that for a long time and I got a little burnt out on that. And I feel like I need to be like, I'm going to come in and fix some stuff and leave at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think it's, it's so funny how everything changes. Like it's cyclical, you know, everyone's talking right now about like recession and freaking out. And I'm not as concerned. Like we're usually the people that figure this shit out. Well, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. we're, you know, this is the, the, we're the ones who fix all the messes. So when it's messy, we're usually great. Like COVID was great for a lot of us. Um, yeah. Like I'm not so worried about it. We'll, f you know, kind of figure it all out. I, the beauty of what we do is that when times are good, we can help teams that are scaling and growing and when times are bad we can help teams that are scaling back and you know they can't afford four full-time people anymore mm -hmm. so I, I I think we have a really flexible business model that 
that yeah. we can serve both different business and, environments. And what we do is making people more efficient, which I feel like is very needed in any environment, right? You make right. more money no matter what is going on in the world if you're more efficient. Right, right. So how, I'm, you have retainer clients. I'm guessing those are a lot of longer term clients, right? You like to be in the businesses. Um, how do you get clients? Like, <sighs> <laughs> the reason I sigh, the reason I sigh is because all of my marketing friends are going to beat their heads against the wall and be like, no, Katie, no. I understand. All of my clients have been through word of mouth and recommendation. <clears throat> I have big plans for a YouTube channel to really take over the world, but I keep getting new clients thrown in my lap. <laughs> and I don't say this in a braggadocious way. Um, no. It, it, it's more cute, comical because, you know, the more you plan, <laughs> the less right? you you're like, I'm going to do this in June. Right. Like it's literally been a year and I've paid a lot of money for this channel that hasn't even gotten, <laughs> I haven't even written one bit of content for it yet. That's amazing. Um, it, Cause I keep getting new clients and you know, when you initially are with a client, the first three months, six months, even a year, if you're long-term retainer like me. It, you, it takes a lot of time and energy and I, <clears throat> I'd much rather serve them properly and appropriately and get recommendations mm -hmm. than be this face on, you know, a marketing channel or whatever that people don't really know or understand. So my marketing really consists of, I just post a couple times a week on social media at the moment. Um, and the rest has all been either. So I have one client that I've been with since day one and he acquired another business and brought me in on that. So it's been like growing with my clients. Mm -hmm. uh, I have another client who recommended somebody who hired me, who has now recommended somebody who's going to be hiring me. So it's been like the gift that he's on giving, yeah. which I'm not mad about, you know, no. but at the beauty too, of being at the, where I'm at right now is I can kind of pick and choose. I mean, you know, when you meet with somebody, if the vibes are kind of weird and it's kind of like nails on a chalkboard, you know, the beauty of it now is that you can, you can pick and choose. It has to work both ways. They yes. have to want you just as much as you want to work with them. Otherwise it is a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Like every time I, even like back in corporate, like every time I was in an interview, I got that gut feeling like you don't want to work this guy. And I'd be like, and then that like ego takes over and you're like, but this is a big deal. You should take this job. And it was always the worst decision. Like every time I've gone against my gut and even to this day, if I get on a call with a client, like a, like a discovery call or whatever, and it is awful. I'm like, nope. Now I've listened. Like, oh no, you're going to be a nightmare. Like, no, no, thank you. Yeah. like we are not going to work well together. And I think that there's personalities that have to work well. Like I am very blunt and upfront and I talk fast and I'm not like my website isn't flowers. And like, I don't know. It's, it's not like I'm not woo, but like, I don't have everything's not pastels. You don't, you know what I'm saying? Like right, it's a very right. different vibe. Yep. And if you want, like you have to match up with those clients, yeah. especially yep. if you're going to be long-term, if you're going to do one little project for them and not really deal with them and be done fine. But right. if you're going to be long-term retain retainers, yeah, we've all had those clients. You're in there and you're like, this is hell. Right. Well, and let's face it. I mean, the building industry is male dominated oh, and yeah. I've been really fortunate that I've worked with men who have been, I mean, they, they aren't soft, you know, but they also <laughs> like, they treat me with respect and treat me with, yeah. you know, they don't, they're not like, who's this little five footer telling me what to do. <laughs> um, so it's real. It, that is the, you know, as, as common as those two industries are, there's also beauty in that, you know, the building industry is male dominated and really like factual and, you know, logistic and the, the design industry is just more, it's more creative. It's definitely more feminine. Um, and it's, it's been fun working with brilliant business women because I didn't have that experience in mm -hmm. the corporate the corporate brick and mortar space. So, yeah, me either. Um, that is, that was, that's nice. Like now yeah. I have a lot more women that I deal with where for a long time I was wall street. And then I came into this world and it was male clients. And I thought, well, I know how to deal with men who are abrupt yeah. and rude. So I guess that's my, who I should go after. Right. Like I could deal with that. And then you start to realize like, maybe you don't have to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, like find someone, not that men are bad, but like I ended up 
I have lovely male clients now, but like, there's a couple that were just like, I thought they, I, I could deal with it. So I should. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of mm, merge out of that into, uh, yeah. It's so funny. Like, this is a whole nother topic, but it's so funny. You mentioned that there, I don't know about you, but I have sort of, sort of this martyr mentality, like, well, I can put up with people's nonsense. So that's, yes. yes. You know, and I know so many women who really get their feelings hurt about things or, you know, are really sensitive about stuff. And it doesn't bug, like it does bug you at the end of the day, but in general, like, I feel like it's my duty to take on yes yes where does that come from who said that like Like I should protect somebody who's really nice because I can deal with being like having jerks (laughs) right so (laughs) you're like this is the dumbest thing this is the dumbest idea ever why am I I doing this and then people are really nice to you and they're like oh well you know what you're talking about right so go ahead and you're like oh it's not fantastic (laughs) like what the first time someone like they're like no you know what you're talking about right I was like yeah but no one wanted to listen yes, to me before. <laughs> yeah. And now it's like, I've had clients that, you know, their lawyer asked some questions and they're like, you have to go ask Kelly. I don't know. She knows everything. Yeah. And it's yeah. such a different world now than it was in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> what is the plan? Like, like forward, like sustainable growth. Like what, what are you planning for the next year? Is that, are you worried about too much of like recession or any of that kind of stuff? Or is it just like, I'm going to truck along. We're going to be fine. I'm not worried about the recession. Like I said, I really feel like if things go South, uh, we would go after businesses that are, you know, downsizing. Yeah. You know, so I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Um, My goal for the next year is to really, so right now I'm the face with every single one of our clients. I attend the weekly meeting. I'm the person and I'm delegating a lot of things to other people. And I really, so I'm this middleman and I really need to work on some, and I don't know the answer to this, which is why I haven't done it yet, but working on how to sort of present the team to clients. So they know, okay, for HR, I need to go to her for finance. I need to go to her instead of Katie. (laughs) Yeah what's the thing? And it's like, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. Let me ask Susie, you know? Right. So that's a big one is really figuring out how to present the team. And number two is, um, really locking down the processes and procedures that I have in my head. And I know how things go and know how they should flow just a second nature. And I hate writing. I, when I was a kid, I would write books and novels and all the things, but now, and choose your own adventures. Now I literally hate, I hate writing. I hate it, but I have to be able to document yeah. how I do things and why I do things in a cohesive way. That's just churn and burn and teach other people how to do it in that way. That's my big goal for next year. Um, and I'm really just resisting that. That's oh, so funny God. because that is what I'm saying. This is how <laughs> so, people so similar can be so different. I am on the other side saying that's all I want to do. Like that is the new pilot program I'm working on now is I'm not selling you on this, right? This it's not become a sales call. Don't worry. <laughs> no, but like, I'm like, everyone's like, you don't want to be an SOP writer. I'm like, but I kind of do. Like if I could sit in my office right now and Gross. like write SOPs and like make dashboards and make all these things nice, like you just make the videos and I'll do everything else. Like that to me is heaven. And you're like, well, I don't ever want to do this. And it's okay, so funny. Need a partner. Right. I'd even... <laughs> Like I am all in. I'm like, I could make SOPs all day because no one's yelling at me. It's very Zen. Yeah. Like, See, you know? and I, I kind of like me. I think I have a Napoleon complex. Like I like, I don't mind being yelled at. I don't mind having, and this is me, That's my eight, Enneagram eight personality. Like I am t- super cozy having difficult conversations. I don't take That's anything so funny. personal. And while I hope other people don't take things personal that I say, I know they do. Um, but it doesn't bother me. It really, it doesn't bother me one little bit. That's great. I, <laughs> um, it totally makes, I'm one of those people that like, I'll slam on the phone. Like, You're never going to believe it. And poor Brian is in there. Like, oh my God, what do I have to deal with? As I like, blah, 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 blah. and then I get mad. Like, I don't tend to be like, <laughs> it's more like a lot of curse words come out and I don't need this, you know, like, it's very funny. So I'm a six, yeah. I'm not an eight. Apparently that's, it's a little different. I worry yeah. about things more, but, um, yeah, I don't like to get yelled at. 
you, I think you could probably deal with it better, but I think I'm just like burnt on it, you know, yeah, after yeah. all these years. Yeah. yeah. Well, and when you're, you know, like I said, when you're sacrificing time with your kids and your family, yeah, really like, and you stay up at night worrying about these businesses and then they yell at you for something. It sucks. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a worrier. Like I will yeah. wake up three in the morning and wonder if, you know, that payment got made or that thing. And like, I, and sometimes if I, I can't go back to sleep, I will come out to my desk at 3 a.m. to check on something because mm-hmm. it's quicker to check on it than it is to lay in bed for the next 45 minutes telling myself to stop worrying about it, which by I the way- I think I'm married to you. My husband is that <laughs> way. He's totally that way. I come back and Brian's like, where were you? I'm like, check it to the payments. He's like, what's wrong with you? It's 3 in the morning. I love it. <laughs> so um, we all make mistakes in agencies and especially like growing them, right? (laughs) What is like one big one that you were like, whoo, like looking back now, it was a big mistake. Maybe not, but like, maybe not a error. Like it didn't cost a lot of money or anything, but like, what is the thing that like you made the mistake and it was like, oh, I get it now. Like you had to do that to like think Mm. differently. Like, you know what? It would probably be at the beginning and I, like, I couldn't, I wouldn't change this and I couldn't, but at the beginning, just taking on anyone who would hire me, you know, I, there are some industries that I had no business being in. Um, and, and not because, you know, I can run their finances. I can, you know, run their admin piece, but one of the beautiful things about my niche is that I can also sort of bridge over to the project production side because I've seen enough of it whereas some other industries no I like <laughs> there's I a know, lot of googling yeah, <laughs> like, I gotta figure yeah. this out and like you know it's hard when you're a strong personality like me that's like well you should do this when I don't have a you should do this to mm-hmm. tell somebody it's just it feels yucky and you feel imposter syndrome yeah. and all the things. So, I mean, it took, you know, kissing a few frogs to find my prince, if you will. Um, but it, it, it just, it, it was yucky. It felt yucky. Yeah. And, you know, it was hard. So, yeah. I mean, I think that goes back to the whole having a niche is great because you know, the answers, there's yeah. a lot of people trust me out there. <laughs> there's a lot of people. I did it for a long time. Like you're in the beginning and you're trying to figure out and they want a recommendation on something. And yeah, we have like the DOO community. We have the OBM community, like all of that kind of stuff. But like being the person who already knows the thing is great because so many people spend money paying a VA to look things up. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't know. They don't yeah. have the experience there. Yeah. And that's great if, you know, you know, you're getting a beginner person and all that, but if you're getting someone who knows that special stuff, you get answers. Right. Right. Instead of just what you could have Googled. <laughs> right. Right. I think too, like even within my niche, even honing it down even more to <clears throat> like, I've had builders that I've contracted with that really don't, they're not interested in technology. Like they are mm-hmm. stuck on the chick behind the desk and you know as much as they they want to grow and change they're really not interested in that and that that's okay but you know one of the things when I'm when I'm parsing out who I want to work with is hey are you interested in growing are you interested in learning more are you interested in expanding your choices um And even, you know, another little thing that's hard is I have some local clients and that's been a challenge because there you, I'm, I'm down, I'm 15 minutes away. Why can't I come by the office, you know? And I certainly can, but that's just not the model. It's not the most efficient. Mm -hmm. It's not the best thing for your buck. And it's not the model that my agency is, is built on. So, you know, I'm fortunate that I have all the time zones. Um, but there are a couple local clients too. And it's, it's always a challenge at first. Like, do we see you? Do you come in the office? How does that work? So. Yeah, that's gotta be (laughs) right. I feel like there's, there's a couple of clients over the years who are like, no, 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 can we just have calls like all the time? And I'm like, you don't want to pay me to be on all these calls. You don't need any of these. Yeah. But like, there's a, but this is, it's comfort. Yeah. Yeah. Like just having you come in makes them feel better. Right. Well, and if you think, you know, the remote world versus brick and mortar also, 
there were the people you worked with who are always at someone's desk talking to them and not, I don't mean like not working, like talking out ideas and really like, Mm -hmm. and then there were the people who sat focused and did their work. And I think the people who needed that interaction, it's really hard for them to work virtually because they either want to meet all the time or they can't focus. And the people who really liked to just sit at their desk and put their head down and get their work done. I think the virtual world works really and compartmentalize their time. Yes. Like people like me that it works really, really well. So what does your day look like then? Like what would your day, your week, like, are you managing people all day? Are you in meetings? Are you in client calls? Like what, what does your day week look like typically? So that has evolved. Um, I will tell you even three months ago, I was in meetings all the time. And while I understand the importance of meetings, I couldn't get any actual work done because I was meeting all the time. Uh-huh. Um, I have since consciously not only tried to decrease meetings, but also um, fill them into one day. So mm. I have kids. So I get up in the morning and get them off to school, sit down to my desk. I'm usually at my desk by 830 I usually have meetings starting around nine on Mondays. I try to get all my meetings done early so that I can have the rest of the day to put out a fire or, you know, there's always fires. I'm sorry. I don't care how organized you are. There's always fires. Um, So usually have my morning meetings around nine. I do most of my weekly meetings on Mondays so that then I can have the rest of the week to work. Um, and then we, uh, my team, we all have different schedules. So like I said, I have an accounting schedule. Um, we have, um, I we meet weekly with my OBM. I use all, of, I know you're supposed to be efficient and choose one or two, but I use all the communication channels with my team. So I'm either slacking or boxing or emailing or texting or calling. <laughs> I, I am. I just am. Um, I mean, when you have six businesses that you're supporting and they all have, you know, teams of up to five, that's like 50 people. So you've got to be flexible in how they can contact. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure someone else would say, no, you need to. Do you find that like, do you find it hard to like keep track of it though? I don't simply because, um, we use a project management tool and my OBM is amazing. She like, she's really, really good at bulldogging that, that click up. She's like, these things are past due. Are you either going to do them today? Are we, and of course, she's much more sweet about it than that, but it's basically, are you going to do it today? Should we push out till next week or can somebody else do it for you? It's like, that's amazing. Yeah. She's really good about that. So yeah. And, and I know the things like the day-to-day stuff, mostly my team can do. I really just do the fires at this point. So Got it. That's good. Yeah. You're actually my, I'm getting a little, like, I can't imagine like messages coming from every place, mostly because the thing is I read them, right. Cause like the little thing, the red button comes up, whatever it is. And I read that. And then I'm not somewhere I can write anything down. And I'm a person who has to write everything down or it completely was, it just goes right out of my head. So then I have like messages that I'm like, Oh no, I, I can't unread this. So I'm going to totally forget as soon as I get that on my desk. And then like, I get a message like, Hey, it. I totally yeah. forgot about your message. So like try to keep them at least centralized to a place. Um, but I understand like you, there are definitely, we use Slack for the most part, but we have clients who can't handle that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I totally missed a piece. So I do have people manning the emails. Um, oh, like that's a big two, help. Yeah. There are two really big clients that I generally man the emails just because there's always something unusual happening, but there are some other ones that I have someone manning and they go through and either delete the junk or say, Hey, Katie, this is a fire or just put it in click up for next week or site. Like, so I do have people, you know, when you have 8 billion email addresses (laughs) there, I have other people manning those. Okay. That that, that makes more sense. I was going to say that's otherwise that that's a lot of onslaught of messages. And I feel like when that happens with me, it is how I waste a day. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I want to make it all organized. So I have to go through the entire inbox and make sure everything is organized when that's totally not what I should be doing for the day, but it sucks me in. Totally. Totally. Whole like 45 billion messages in my inbox. Like I can't start twitching. Like I can handle it. Yeah. So, yeah. Having people handle emails is a key. Yeah. I love it. Sure. So, all right. This last question, cause we got to wrap up here, but 
if people, a lot of people that are have been um, listening to this series, they are thinking about having an agency or they're just starting out. Um, and it's always like, I don't know if I want an agency because I think most of us kind of happen into this whole thing. What do you think is so important for an agency? Like as an agency owner, what do you think? Is it leadership? Is it, I don't know. What, what do you think is like the thing you're like, oh, that's like a make or break. Like you have to like people, <laughs> you want to be, have to be able to talk to people. What do you think is important when you're starting or growing an agency? You, you have to know that you, like you have to be comfortable managing people and coaching people and sticking your neck on the line for people and defending your team. So if you're the type that, you know, Susie makes a mistake and you go to the owner and go, yeah, unfortunately, Susie made a mistake. It's probably not the business for you. And not that that's right or wrong. Some people just, it's hard to take ownership for somebody else's mess, right? Mm -hmm. But you have, you have to be willing to go, you know what? We did make a mistake. We're going to fix that. Like, you mm -hmm. know, be the big buffer between if you want to keep good people, you have to protect them. Um, so really just managing people and also being comfortable delegating stuff. And like I said, I'm learning that myself. It's just really hard when you're a control freak and when you're a perfectionist and, you know, you, you are, have been responsible for yourself your whole life and your reputation is important to you. Now these other people are, are doing that. It's really hard and you have to be comfortable with, you know, the hard times and, and give like giving it to other people and taking the heat when it messes yeah. up. But I, yeah. And that's a totally developed skill. Yeah. Like, I don't think anyone's really great at it mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. they care about their work. Right. Like it's, it's, it's a struggle for all of us. Yeah. It is a constant struggle. Even now, I, like I, there's so many things where I'm like, I'm going to do that. I shouldn't be doing yeah. that. No, now it's going to be late. Cause I don't have time to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, Even but silly things like, you know, someone enters a customer in QuickBooks and spells it wrong. I'm like, how dare they? They're not paying attention to detail. And it's like, meanwhile, like I forgot to, you know, file a tax or something. That's way more. <laughs> right. oh. Like, yeah, the, there's some typo in the task and teamwork that no one sees, but our team that like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but like can't if even pay my tasks right now in tax. teamwork, yeah, like everything's late for my own stuff. Yes, I work. Clay works all fine. It's like my own internal stuff. Poor Jessica <laughs> waiting for me to do like a whole list of marketing stuff. I'm like, I swear I'm getting to it. Yeah. And instead I'm organizing my damn inbox. <laughs> well, Sorry, you Jessica. Be, you gotta be able to laugh at yourself, right? Like, well, that's you, it. <sighs> We've been having technical stuff. All <laughs> we have been. Um, you just have to be able to laugh at yourself and really just like, I think, I hope that's one thing that my clients appreciate about me is if I make a mistake or I notice a mistake, I try to like address them first and say, Hey, just so you know, this happened because hiding behind it and trying to sweep it up. It just, from their perspective, it feels yucky and it feels like you're being sneaky. And yes. I'd rather, I'd rather myself feel yucky being like tail between my legs. Sorry, mom, <laughs> I made a bad choice then having them be like, you know, if she's sneaking around about this, what else is she sneaking around? About? Right. And I feel like owning up to that, not just as like a person, but also as an agency owner, like you have to take care of your team. Like before you're not pointing to Susie and saying, oh, she did it. Like yeah, we're a yeah. team. I'm taking care of these people. I'm defending them. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to own up to our stuff and keep going. We're going to do the best we can. Yep. Yeah. Right. We're going to do a great job, but you know, yeah. we're not perfect. So. Right. For sure. For sure. I love it. All right, Katie. Where can everyone find you? Uh, my website is soarwithsuarez.com and all of my social media handles are Soar with Suarez. So Insta, Facebook, LinkedIn. I have a shell of a YouTube channel, but there's no <laughs> content. So if you want to spy on my shell, feel free. But yeah, or just, you know, it, if there's any inquiries or, or questions, you can always reach out to me as well. So, all right. And we will put all that information in the show notes for the people who are not running right now or driving a car. So I like to make, <laughs> I like to shout them out. So you can, you're not uh, running into anyone. And oh God, uh, Katie, if you're running and listening to us, I'm so sorry for you. That sounds like <laughs> torture. 
<laughs> what do you mean? Like, this is like, we're talking operations. Like it's no, so sexy. Running. Like just <laughs> running. It sounds. Oh, just the running part. I was like, we're fun. I don't know what you're talking about. You and I fun. Uh, yes. Yeah. The running though. No, yeah. I want to love running, but I don't. I, I ran track and I still don't like it. So <laughs> anyway, Katie, it was great to see you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I will see everyone else next week. Thank you so much for joining me this week. If you have an agency or want to create one, come join my Facebook community, Get Your Agency Together, where we talk all the things growing and scaling your agency. For show notes and more info on all the things, head over to ReynoldsOBM.com. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook at ReynoldsOBM. And finally, if you enjoy this podcast, I would love for you to give us a review on iTunes payroll was due in half an hour and people wanted to chat. I'm like, sorry, but I don't care about your kids. I'll wake up to you right now. <laughs> I need you to stop talking. Stop talking to me now. You want to get paid or not? <laughs>